Hey everyone, welcome to New Way Health Podcast, where we explore topics to enrich our total well being. My name is Jennifer Gilman, owner of New Way Health Coach, and we're a group of functional medicine health coaches getting to the root cause, helping you actually get to your health goals. So we work with our clients globally through one to one health coaching, corporate wellness, and then I also do professional speaking. Today, I'm really excited. Our topic is pelvic health. And you guys, we do not talk about this enough. So I am just so fortunate to have met Dr. Jordan Schmidt, who's with us today. (laughs) (laughs) Dr. Jordan and I met, can you believe we met like a year and a half ago? No, time flies when you're having fun. That, and I actually feel like I've known you longer. Yes, I agree. Uh, I was so weird. I looked back at my notes. I'm like, it was only a year and a half ago, you know? So that was just kind of a surreal moment for me when I was, you know, thinking about introducing you. But so Dr. Jordan is with us and she is, uh, you're, you're part owner with Dr. Molly, right? The two of you are. So I, Dr. Molly is the, the founder of Pelvic Balance Physical Therapy. We're located in St. Petersburg, um, but I have been with her, oh gosh, five over five years now. Um, so I'm now the lead pelvic floor therapist for Pelvic Balance. So um, chances are, if you come in the office, you're going to, you're going to see me at, at some point or another, um, and, or at least we'll speak on the phone. Um to when I call and give more information. So that's awesome. And, you know, uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm also in St. Petersburg, Florida. So that's where we met. Um, but of course, um, I work virtually, right? And then I was noticing on your website, because I think I forgot this, honestly, Dr. Jordan, is that I was thinking you were just in person, but you also do virtual visits, right? Yes, that's a great question. So a lot of our appointments are in person. Um, There's just something about being able to um, really assess someone, right, and really see how they're moving and be very hands on. Um, But we do offer other options as well, if that is not feasible for someone. So absolutely, we can offer uh, virtual appointments. Um, Obviously, they look a little bit different, um, but they still will cover the same needs for that particular individual. Um, And we also offer um, a couple different online courses that are self-paced. They're very thorough courses for um, what their particular um, impairments are. So for example, we have a postpartum mama and baby workshop. Um, We also have another course that's called the Happy V that's more geared towards those that might have uh, pelvic pain um, or urinary urgency pain type symptoms. Um, And we have a lot of success with those as well. If in person, appointments are a barrier or if someone um, can't commit to virtual appointments as well. So we we use those as another option um, to try to widen the accessibility um, for those that we work with. I'm so glad you do this. And I know I want to talk about this right out the gate because when people think pelvic health, they mm-hmm. feel like they have to be seen by somebody. And although yes. they're, you know, where we're located, it actually works out a lot, to be honest. Yes. I've had clients, they are coming into town, right? Yes, so we might see you for a first time and then all the rest of the future visits are virtual and it works out really yes. well if you were able to, to do Absolutely. that, but we have courses, which is really great. Um, yes. that is, I think really key because some people may not feel comfortable, right? Out the gate. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yes. I do find that you know, by the time someone makes it to our office, they've been through such uh, an array of tests and providers um, that more often than not, the response that I get is, I'm here for a reason and I want us to get down to the the drivers behind my concerns. Um, so I find a lot of times by the by the time people get to us, they're very motivated um, to have some of that hands-on care. Um, but absolutely, there, there are those that might be a little bit more apprehensive, um, or I've had cases absolutely where someone may come in for that initial appointment um, so that we can get a nice full assessment. Um, but you know, different barriers, they may live particularly far, um, or transportation might be an issue, or they're moving, right? Um, I've had that happen before, too, um, where someone might be moving or, or traveling a lot for work. And so it provides another avenue for them to get the care that they need, um, versus just 
spinning their wheels or having to wait until they commit to uh, maybe some in-person care or have the availability to do so. Okay. Okay. And you guys, you're probably still wondering like, what is this encompass, right? So I'm just going to read from a list here that I had put together. Um, And so, because I want you to know this is full, right? This is everything about the pelvic area. So this is what I have down, uh, pain with intercourse, bladder leakage, urgent and urgency, pregnancy and postpartum pain, vaginal or rectal pain and prolapse, abdomen, any kind of abdomen pain, SIG, Mm -hmm. low back and hip pain, painful bladder syndrome, and I'm sure I'm missing some, right? Um, So before before we actually really go into, because I do want you to tell us about about this specialty, um, why why did you choose this specialty? I'm so curious. That is such a a great question. Um, You know, if you would have asked me going into PT school, um, or even at the beginning of PT school, I, this so was not even on my radar. Um, you know, I really thought I was maybe going to go into outpatient orthopedics, right. And, and kind of treating an array of body parts. Um, but in my third year of our doctoral program, we actually have, uh, some guest lecturers come in, uh, and pelvic floor is a really, um, considered to be kind of a subspecialty underneath orthopedics. So in school, it's not, it's something we're introduced to, but it's not something that we're highly trained in. It requires a lot of additional training um, as it should outside of our core coursework. Um, And so it was originally in some of those guest lectures that I was introduced to pelvic floor therapy. Um, And I was just really saddened by the amount of providers that people would typically go through from a medical and healthcare standpoint um, and the amount of procedures and surgeries. Um, and oftentimes it doesn't actually address the concern long term. And so they were not receiving good um, conservative and effective care. And so that really stuck with me. Um, and the other half of that is I was so surprised that despite you know, the number of therapists that I had worked with over the years leading up to PT school and even in PT school that I had never really heard of pelvic floor therapy. Um, And it's something that it actually affects so many more of us than you would realize. Um, And so anytime we're talking about any bladder concerns, bowel concerns, um, sexual health concerns, those are functions that we're doing every day, right? They're a part of our day-to-day and our quality of life. And so to have people that are kind of being pushed through the system um, and not getting real answers and real effective care was just honestly kind of triggering for me. And so I I fell in love with the fact that there's so much that we can do to empower those that come to see us as pelvic floor therapists. And so I just, I fell in love with the specialty um, and I never looked back. So I continued with my additional training um, after uh, receiving my doctorate in physical therapy and I've been doing pelvic floor ever since and I I wouldn't change it. It's one of the, probably the most challenging specialties in my opinion. Um, I'm a little biased, but it's also the most rewarding um, to be able to give and help people empower themselves to have a good quality of life. Um, so wouldn't yeah. trade it, but that's, that's how I got started in this specialty. That. And I love that you were introduced to this and just your eyes were open, you know, to like, oh, yes. there's a real need here and I'm drawn to it. Um, yes. And you're such a compassionate person. It's, it, it takes a special Thank person you. to be in this so that people can open Thank up you. and feel that, you know, they can share with you at their deepest yes. level. So um, Absolutely. But yeah, I see I'm with you there. I like, I'm amazed at what some of my clients tell me some of the procedures mm-hmm. that they've gone through yes. and there's still no answers. And, you know, they, I want everyone listening to know there's these options, you know, that you don't have to be going through some of those other things to see somebody like Dr. Jordan and, and just mm-hmm. have a conversation, right? Just have a conversation. Yes. Your eyes will be open. I think that's the real, real big thing. So, so tell us what is pelvic balance physical therapy? Yes. What is that? Yes. So at pelvic balance, we are pelvic floor therapy specialists. Um, And so what that means is we have additional training outside of just our doctorate of physical therapy degree 
to really assess the nerves, the muscles, the connective tissue inside the pelvic floor and around the pelvic floor. Um, so I like to describe it a lot like we have additional training in this puzzle piece that's often missed when we're talking about this this lower half of the body and really when we're talking about the body as, as a whole, right? Um, and so that's where our additional training comes in. And it's very important, by the way, as a side note, since we're talking about this, that if someone is seeking pelvic floor therapy, right now, unfortunately, there's kind of a wide range. So you may have some therapists that um, are marketing themselves as pelvic floor therapists, um, but they may not perform certain treatments or techniques. And so one thing that I always like to encourage um, those that are seeking this type of therapy to ask is number one, um, where did you do your training for pelvic floor therapy? Um, and number two, are you trained to assess the muscles internally? Um, and that by no means um, does that mean that an individual who comes for pelvic floor therapy has to undergo an internal assessment. Of course, that's completely um, based off of an individual's preference, but the provider that is treating you should be trained to do that if they're providing pelvic floor physical yes. therapy, um, in my opinion, and, and in a lot of others' opinions as well. So that's always a question that I, I like to make sure that people are asking, whether they come to work with us specifically or are looking for a provider elsewhere. That makes total sense. And I really love that you're guiding us to like what questions on the first mm -hmm. question though, what should the answer be? You're like, where did they get their training? What are they, yes. uh, what, what do our listeners need to be looking for? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, there's traditionally been two major organizations that provide the majority, I would say, of the pelvic floor training. Um, one of those organizations is called Herman and Wallace, um, and the other is the APTA or the American Physical Therapy Association. Um, they both do very similar trainings. They're just different organizations, um, but they traditionally are the two that you should be looking for your therapist to have had training from. Um, of course, there's an even wider array of what we call continuing education courses, um, but those are some of the foundational uh, trainings that um, we should be exposed to as pelvic floor therapists and having gone through in order to be able to appropriately um, treat that, that population. Okay. That's so good for us to know, really, because um, yeah. it is, it's hard to decipher. Are you a good person to, for me to even have a, yes. take my time to have a discovery call with, you know, type of thing. Yes. All right. Absolutely. So let's, let's dive in a little bit. Um, I'm going to yes. separate the groups here. Um, okay. with new way health, we, we actually 50, 50, we work with men and women. Okay. Yes. And I know you do too. Right. So, mm -hmm. but let's start with women. What are some of the, the most common things that women come to you for just so we can kind of start thinking about that? Yes. Oh, great question. Yes. So, um, what I would say the number one, when, when the public thinks of pelvic floor therapy, they automatically go to the postpartum woman, right? Um, and absolutely that is such an appropriate time to seek pelvic floor therapy, um, because your body just grew a whole human, it births this human, right? Um, and so absolutely there's a lot of rehab, um, that should be done so that you can get back to your normal activities and feel really strong um, in doing those, right, without any, any symptoms. Um, so that is probably the most common when, when the general public thinks about pelvic floor therapy. Okay. Um, now, something I like to add to that is when we're talking about um, rehab from a postpartum standpoint, a common misconception I hear in my office is, well, that only applies to a vaginal birth and not a C-section. Mm. Um, and that is absolutely not accurate. So just because someone has a C-section delivery um, does not mean that they do not need appropriate rehab of the abdominal muscles, um, of the scar tissue from the C-section. Your pelvic floor can still absolutely be involved um, because again, it grew a whole human and carried that human, right? So there's a lot of changes that go on. Um, so those are kind of the two to, um, I would say from a from a population standpoint, kind of the two most most common that we'll see. Now, I as a pelvic floor therapist um, know that it goes much more beyond that. So another thing that we tend to treat quite a bit at pelvic balance um, is any kind of pain with insertion. Uh, so this could be painful intercourse. Um, this could be painful 
pain with a tampon insertion or menstrual cup insertion. This could be pain with gynecological exams um, or just pelvic pain in general without there necessarily having to be any sort of insertion. Uh, so that's another very common thing that we tend to see um, and very much what goes hand to hand, uh, hand in hand with that um, oftentimes are urinary type symptoms. So urinary urgency and frequency, um, urinary leakage, uh, which is not just in the postpartum population that can happen across the lifespan. Yeah. Any kind of bowel concerns as well. So um, if someone has uh, chronic constipation concerns, um, that can be driven from a muscle standpoint as well. Um, any kind of fecal incontinence um, is something that we also treat in, in the female population um, as well. So those are some of the big ones that we see, um, as well as things like painful uh, cycles, right? So um, for example, things like endometriosis, while we don't specifically treat the endometriosis itself, right, that's going to be more of a medical management. Um, there's so much that we can do to make that a less painful experience from an abdominal standpoint and a pelvic floor standpoint. Um, so a lot of what we're doing is trying to have good tissue movement and blood flow um, reduce the body's hypersensitivity um, so that we're not getting quite as high of a pain response um, among some other things. So those are some of the common populations that we would typically see um, from a woman's standpoint. I think a lot of people listening just have their eyes wide open on this. You mm -hmm. know, it's just so much more than than what anyone would think about, you know, yes. um, and I'm postmenopausal. So there's a, that whole group like going through yes. so many things, so many changes and dryness and and pain yes. sex, you know, all of this yes. is happening, right? So um, I hear much about this and I've had my own journey as well. So I really think like you do span all ages for sure. Uh, yes. Let's go into men. Okay. What are some yes. of the common things that men would come to you for? Absolutely. So, um, Men can experience a lot of similar symptoms that women do, uh, which surprises a lot of people. Uh, but definitely with men, again, any kind of um, pain in the pelvic region. And when I say pelvic region, I can mean inside the, the pelvis. So things like the penis or the testicles or the rectum. Um, it can also be pain around the pelvis. So it could be the front or the back of the hip. Um, it could be in the low back area. So all of those can also stem from the pelvic floor. Um, so we do see a lot of pain type conditions with that men can also have urinary urgency and frequency type conditions as well, which we treat um, any kind of rectal pain, again, constipation um, or fecal incontinence as well, um, erectile dysfunction, if there is a muscular component to that um, is something we also treat. Um, we do treat urinary um, incontinence in men, although typically that's not as common as it is for women, um, except in the case of maybe a prostate type surgery or prostate removal, then it becomes much more common in the male population. And that is also something that we as pelvic floor therapists um, would treat after surgery. And very often um, we recommend actually have them having them come in before surgery as well, so that we can prepare the body as much as possible for some of those um, post-operative yeah. symptoms that typically arise with those types of surgeries. Yeah. Prostate health is so important and I'm finding it's happening um, in much younger, you know, younger yes. men right now. And so, and yes. they're more aware of it, honestly, they'll, they'll mm -hmm. say, I want to stay ahead of this. You know, I've heard yes. a lot of like, I need to do what I can to stay ahead of this. Yes. So, so you're a great person for that. I love that. Yeah. So uh, let's talk just a, just a little bit about like, is there something people can do at home or do you have any little tips that they can do at home yes. just to keep the pelvic health well? Are there any yes. things that you can share? Oh my gosh. Yes. This is such a good question. Um, so there are of course things that I like to just call pillars of health. Right. And so, um, those come back of course to good hydration, right. Making sure that we're staying well hydrated throughout the day, ideally sipping throughout the day, um, is ideal versus kind of gulping and then going long periods of time in between. Um, nutrition of course plays a massive role in our overall health and well being and our healing, right. Right? Um, so it's really hard to have a healthy pelvic floor if we aren't feeding our body well, right? Um, 
Sleep obviously is very important from a recovery standpoint for the body. Um, and so a, a lot of times with my pelvic floor patients, if they're not sleeping well, it's really hard for us to either build muscle if that's the goal, right? or to help reduce pain. Because we know when we don't have good quality and quantity of sleep, our body does not recover well. Um, and it also increases the likelihood actually of us having pain response as well. Mm -hmm. So sleep, incredibly important, um, both good time frame of sleep and good quality of sleep during that time frame. Um, so those are some of the big, big foundational ones. Um, uh, I'm a big fan as well of breath work. So the pelvic floor is part of our core. A lot of times when we think of our core, we think of like our abdominal muscles, right? And yes, those are part of our core, but our core is actually um, kind of like to describe it as like a, a soda pop can, if you will, right? And so we have our abdominal muscles on the front, we have our spine and our back muscles, right? But at the top and bottom of that is actually our, our diaphragm and our pelvic floor. And so when we are doing relaxed breath work, right? Um, and we're allowing for that diaphragm to move down. So just a nice relaxed inhale and our belly is expanding and our rib cage is relaxing and expanding. That should also allow our pelvic floor to relax and expand as well, which is incredibly important for any muscle group. Um, and then when we exhale, those should move back up into their normal resting spot. So a lot of times I like to describe them like the top and bottom of an elevator, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so just having that nice healthy movement of the pelvic floor, um, it's foundational, right? If my pelvic floor is too stuck or too taut um, or not moving well, it's like any other, other muscle group, it's after a while not going to be very happy, right? So um, some good relaxed breath work is incredibly helpful. Um, from a muscle standpoint, it's also incredibly helpful from a nervous system standpoint. Um, and our nerves directly tell our muscles what to do, right? So um, it's an exercise that anybody can do. Um, and it's yeah. really, really safe to do so and has just so many benefits. But it's one of my favorite ones from a pelvic floor health standpoint yeah. in general. I love it. I love everything you mentioned. Of course, you're singing from the same song from me. <laughs> I, love it. I love it. I feel like we say the same things to our clients, but we also practice it ourselves and yes. particularly breath work. Um, it's free, breath, you yes. know, free is free. So it yes. doesn't cost anything extra and diaphragmatic breathing is a, just a really good place to start. You don't have to get all fancy Absolutely. on some of the others. Yes. Just focus on the diaphragmatic breathing and you Absolutely. will be really good, you know? Yes, absolutely. So I'm not giving any more of your secrets away. I want them to contact <laughs> you. So where could people find and follow you? Yeah, absolutely. So um, one of the best ways to kind of get to know us is on our website. It's pelvicbalancept.com. Um, we have lots of wonderful resources there. Um, Dr. Molly, who's the founder, does a podcast. Um, it's called Sex on the Floor. Highly recommend it. Um, we also have a lot of wonderful resources under our blog section. So a lot of research-based um, resources. So if you have a question about a topic, chances are you'll be able to find that. Um, we also offer um, free discovery calls. So if it's something where you're having some concerns, you're not sure if you're um, a candidate for pelvic floor therapy, you can schedule that um, with us. It's typically a Zoom uh, call. And so we'll go through and ask some specific questions and kind of walk through what our recommendation would be, um, whether that's setting up a follow-up appointment with us, or if we think you're better suited with another type of provider and giving you those referral sources as well. Um, so th that's probably the best way to get the most information. Um, we also have a, a Facebook page as well as Pelvic Balance Physical Therapy. Um, and we also have an Instagram as well at Pelvic Balance Physical Therapy too. Fantastic. This has been so wonderful. I always enjoy just talking to you because I learned something new and I'm also mindful of, Ooh, I haven't done something in a while. I need to get to it. <laughs> I love it. I love so it. I know all of you listening have, I'm sure learned so much and you might be wanting to reach out to Dr. Jordan. I really encourage you to, because as you can see, just so much information and things we really need to know about. There's other ways to do this. You guys, you know, than the traditional or the conventional yes. way, right? Um, Absolutely. So I hope you, you know, really learned something from this. Definitely drop a line to me if you want to let me know your comments and feedback. Share this with others that you think could really learn about. If you, you probably thought of three people, right? Just share this with them because this is that important of a topic. Until next time, 
we really care about you and just know that we're always, uh, we're always there for you. Okay. Bye for now.